Hello there and welcome to Frontiers of Innovation, a LinkedIn and Facebook Live initiative brought to you by Canon. Now we're absolutely delighted you've joined us for this virtual session and indeed to all of our visitors here from around the world, around the region, but I see we have many, many people coming from around the world, so that's great that you're here. I'm Athna Trainer, your host for this session, and today we're going to be taking a different look at the future of printing. Now, as always, we're here, we're live for you. We want your participation. So we really want to ask you to get involved. I have just two spectacular guests for the next hour. And we're really going to have an interesting and dynamic dialogue. So I want to make sure that you're involved. So make sure you get in your questions. Let us know who you are. Let us know what you're doing and what questions we can put to our guests. And as we look around the universe, we're even going beyond the universe today. So that's why I'm so excited about this session. We are going into the printerverse, so to speak. So I want you to meet our intergalactic ambassador from the printerverse. Yes, yes, we, I told you it'd be a bit different. Deborah Korn joins us. Deborah, great to see you. Thank you so, so much for having me and good afternoon good morning and good evening everybody in multiple and of time course zones. particularly since uh, we got you up bright and early in the u.s so we're this thrilled to have you here thank you and we also have a perspective coming we have international perspectives on this but from the uk we're absolutely delighted to have with us who karis cop so karis thank you so much a writer communication specialist and again really focusing on what's going on in the printing sector. So as I said, a different look at this, but I'm really, really excited to have you both on. Now, Deborah, if I may start with you, and when we look sure. at this industry, an industry that, yes, is changing, maybe not as quick as it should be, but uh, you really think it's time that the industry kind of gets out and breaks out of its comfort zone at the moment. Give me a feel for where you think the industry maybe has been and what it needs to do. Well, I think that um, Corona has really accelerated all of the timelines for people who have been dabbling on what is the future of print. Uh, the future of print hit us all in the face um, in he at least here in the United States in March, when um, it was evident that all of the automation processes, all of the streamlining, all of the online tools uh, to uh, to um, enable e-commerce and um, all of the ways that people could do business remotely uh, was became an obstacle for a lot of people. Uh, the printers and the printing companies who had started making investments in automation and, like I said, e-commerce platforms and things like that certainly did better and are doing better. And they are living case studies on, on this, uh, that business needs to be able to be done by any way the customer wants to do business. Uh, it's no longer um, a matter of how anybody who has a business wants to present themselves to the world. It's how consumers are consuming. And print customers are consumers, whether they're on the street and own a store and are just need to reopen it or a giant uh, advertising agency. Everybody is online, has been online. And um, as we move forward, uh, you know, addressing those obstacles that people have been facing for the past, uh, past a few months are really important to moving forward. And then also uh, looking at what's going to happen in the marketplace. And your sur you did an amazing survey that uh, I will probably be referencing a few times, but um, in that survey, um, you know, it was mentioned that smaller runs um, are going to be more of, of a norm, uh, being able to be highly targeted and highly customizable to provide data for uh, marketing people to uh, give money for decisions. And I'm sure I'll be mentioning that a few times. So I hope that that briefly um, answers your first question. Thank you very much again for uh, having me here. We have lots to talk about. And just to our audience out there, just to remind them that Canon actually commissioned um, a wonderful study, an industry market study. And we're going to make sure that we give you details about that, whereby we can share it with you and really let you have a look at that. And we'll, as Deborah said, be looking at it, you know, throughout this session as well. So we'll make sure we put that link up there and make sure that you get it the way you can read it really in depth, looking particularly at the region in MENA as well. Karis, if I can ask you, when we look at the uncertainties at the moment, they're not going to be with us forever. Industry is going to come back and 
would you think this is you know a perfect time for the printing industry to to make sure that they're very much a part of that sort of back to normal relaunch because it is going to happen talk to me about that yeah absolutely i mean is it going to be a back to normal i'm not sure it's um it's certainly going to be um different than it is now but it's also going to be different um but once it comes back <laughs> right so um i think that's i completely agree with deborah it's it's accelerated so much and it's um changing consumer habits and what businesses need to do and print business need to do is is think how has that changed and how can I meet these changing needs there's if you're going to just go back to what you were doing before when the the whole world will have changed it, it won't always be um you know pandemic mode it won't always be how it is now but it is going to be different because it's accelerated those changes and um if you look at retail, you know, that's never going to be the same. They they didn't move quickly enough in, in the last few decades. Um, and the pandemic has just accelerated that. And so what print businesses need to do is think, how has that changed and how can we play a role in what that landscape post-COVID or, you know, the ongoing COVID era looks like? So it's, it's about really looking at what the changes are, what the changes in behavior are, and how print can play a part in, in meeting those different needs. And Deborah, when we look particularly at print, and we're or not print, we look at, sorry, retail, but we look at any kind of printing within that. And we look at, you know, restaurants, we look at all of that that has changed so much. I mean, everybody has to adjust, they have to pivot, they have to do it, would you say, with a lot more speed now? Um, and again, where are the opportunities for them when we come back to whatever it is we come back to, but we've got to relaunch to be something better and different. And how can the printing industry take advantage of this, so to speak? So I come at these things a little differently um, in the sense that um, we can ascertain patterns of what people will be need at, needing, as we mentioned. Um, there will still be need for signage, there will still be need for packaging, there will still be need for short run printing, for mail communications. But if everybody comes back and everybody's in those lanes, all we're doing is racing to another commodity war over just over different applications. So I don't really subscribe to that at all. I subscribe to Let's figure out what people will need five years from now, not five months from now. And that's what I would be planning for. That is how you future proof your business at this point. It's not just getting back to something that seems familiar to you. I will never use the word normal, uh, getting back to normal or trying to be normal. I don't think that that's a goal. I think that that's, you know, just a way to skate through life. But, um, when you and and by the way Karis is a fantastic resource for information like this she writes i don't know if you know she writes actually blogs for my website on the future of print and how uh print will essentially interact with everything and if i were a printer and i was going to make investments besides the immediate ones which are your workflow needs to be in order. This is not a joke anymore. Less human touches, more profits. That's the end of it. Digital printing equipment. It's unless you're a giant packaging printer that has no need uh, for small uh, to talk to anybody about any small runs. Uh, you have to be able to be nimble, but not just in quantity in the method and how you communicate with people. And digital printing is very important for that. But besides that, it's digital marketing it's the um it's the add-on technologies it's printed electronics it's uh to uh karis's point what she writes about you know your milk should text you that you it's expiring and you need to to go uh, go along and you walk into a store and you know sensors hit you uh because you don't need really need to download apps anymore to scan things and say i walk into a retail store and it's my store and i get a loyalty reward or a message three blocks away saying hey if you stop in we'll give you a a, a present or something so i would i would be focusing on getting myself back up and you know obviously managing my clients and making sure they're great but then looking way past everybody else so that when 
if this happens again, first of all, you know, if we go back into a lockdown situation or anything like that, I mean, the United States is in a different situation than everybody else, of course, but um, you're prepared to come back and offer something that nobody else can. And I think that's really important. And indeed, as you said there too, it's it's that concept of probably normal that has stagnated this industry for, for so long because normal yeah. sits on that sort of level of we just tag well, along and whatever comes is good, we deal with it. But they, yeah. they need to be more proactive, not reactive, would you say? Correct. I would define if you want to be normal, then be prepared to be fighting over pennies on print, print with other people because everybody else can do what you can do. You have to be able to do the things other people can't as well as what they can. Why wouldn't I want to work with somebody who can do everything versus having to find, you know, segments of people who do parts of everything I need? And the truth is, I mean, we didn't get into it, but my background, I, I was an advertising agency print customer uh, for tw over 25 years, and I refer to it as one PO to rule them all. Uh, as opposed to like a one-stop print shop. Because to me, it's not really that important that my printer has all everything in their house, as, in house, as long as they have partners who could bring everything I need in the, in the market uh, for my marketing or my communications or whatever that might be. I think that uh, that is really, would be my goal. Um, if I was, if I was a printer right now to, to even if it's, um, here in the United States, I know you want to talk about some examples. We do have printing companies that are merging together because they have different capabilities or forming these little conglomerates of their own little networks so that um, if work comes in online and someone doesn't have a wide format printer or something, they just give it to the guy or the woman who owns the print shop down the block, not go to a trade printer. Not that there's anything wrong with trade printers, but this is a different thing. This is about saving neighborhoods, saving cities, saving you know industry in where you live. Well, we'll come back because I do want the, our audience to understand what both of you do, because you're so involved in this. And again, as resources, I mean, it's just incredible what you're both doing. I've had a fascinating week listening to you both, even though we didn't talk in person, but I've been listening to both of you <laughs> online. Lots well, this going is, on. The, this is how we talk in person now. Yeah. <laughs> this is our new, not, we're not yes. using the word, we're not no. using the normal word. This is our current situation, as I call yes, it. Yes, our current situation. <laughs> Karis, talk to me when we think about future-proofing the business and looking ahead to. You're very passionate, Karis, about, you know, printing 5.0. Talk to me a little bit about that, because I know our audience is going to be fascinated with it. Yeah, sure. And, and it's something I, I first uh, wrote about actually back in January for Print Media Center for a blog on, on Print Media Center. Um, and that was before, you know, we knew what was coming, but it was definitely something that I, I thought was a, a tech trend to watch. And I feel it's only been, uh, you know, been made more relevant by the pandemic. And it's you know, we hear a lot about Industry 4.0, uh, interconnectivity, uh, you know, utilizing the Internet of Things um, for the, you know, what is the fourth industrial revolution? And that's really pertinent to, to the print industry. Uh, but with, with 5.0, it's about uh, thinking more about the automation uh, that you're implementing. It's about uh, human and machines sort of being balanced and working harmoniously. I think there's that... Um, almost a race for, for automation that maybe means that you're implementing things that you're not exactly sure if, if they work for you or if they're right. Um, does it mean that you've got a, a seamless workflow? You know, not always. You just, people have kind of seen uh, an opportunity to automate without without thinking about it. And there's the kind of the lights out factory where, you know, you don't need lights because everything's done by robots. And it's, the thing about that is it, it leaves very little room for creativity um, and especially in, in print there's a there's a great balance between you know science and uh, engineering but also creativity and artistry artistry the creative world um, and so for for print to be fully automated um, you need to make sure that, that you're using the automation in a way that frees up um, the creative humans is there's certain things that only humans can do uh, at the moment <laughs> in terms of um, ingenuity and, and creativity and and there's there's ways of collecting the data the huge amounts of data that the software and hardware and print are create are 
creating and generating and making sure that humans are the ones utilizing the patterns, you know, putting the, the numbers into um, the best decisions, those data driven decisions. So um, it's, yeah, it's something that I think is, is, is more relevant because of the pandemic, you know, really take a step back at this moment and think about, you know, start at the end of the process, think about what you produce, the end product in your hand or in your customer's hand, um, and then work back from there and go through all the touch points and make sure that um, where automation should be, there's automation and where there's human creativity and ingenuity that's uh, you know being used to the, to the best of your ability as a business. I just came across a fabulous word this week and I'd never heard it before in an application that we're hearing in the, in the markets out there in the financial markets and that is called um, quantamentals. And it's like that sort of bridge between the quants and the algorithms and all of the data analysis and the fundamentals, which is like, yeah, the creativity. So I actually think it could reference to this. Deborah, talk to me about the sort of intersection that we could be, uh, the print industry might be finding itself at, you know, following on from what Kara said there in terms of print and technology, you know, and people and analytics and all of that. How does it come together to deliver, you know, that future proof? Um, focus that we really need to find. Okay, well, it's a big. That's a big question. Um, so, um, first, I want to uh, just address something that Kara said. Uh, tack on to it a little. That automating as much as possible, even if it's robots who are putting big boards onto flatbed printers and things like that actually frees up people to have those creative conversations and to be consultants and um, not just be commodity printers. They don't have time to be on the phone. They've got to get keep the presses churning and the orders coming. So there's a lot uh, to uh, looking at how to reutilize humans in print shops if there are ways to use computers and robots and things like that to do some of the tasks that don't need uh, human intervention, so to speak. But going back to your and and uh, going back to your data points, um, it the pr this the problem here is that in order for to even have this conversation, we have to first set a new baseline, which is that a printer doesn't just print anymore, and unless we embrace that, we cannot really move forward in a conversation. So if you just wanna print, check out Canon's equipment, it's awesome. Make sure you get a wide format press. That's gonna be my recommendation. Even if it's a small one, you wanna do some signs and then the rest of this conversation is probably not relevant to you. But if you wanna embrace that that is just not enough anymore, unless you are printing for pandemic proof things such as packaging, financial documents, anything that um, you still see in your mailbox, at least here in the United States. And again, my apologies, I have a limited view of what's going on. We're not even allowed out of my, out of the United States, as you all know. Uh, so I have a limited view of uh, what's really going on in your mailbox, but I know in my mailbox, all I'm getting are health statements, uh, financial statements, things that legally I must receive. Um, there is no marketing uh, mail. So moving back to what is the next iteration of a printer, right? And it has to include being an idea generator. If you wanna, excuse me, refer to that as a marketing person, if you want to refer to that as a print management services or managed print services or a marketing services provider, it doesn't matter what you want to call it at this point. The, the point is that the data, you have to be involved in the, in the customer's data. And uh, the customer's data allows a printer to be involved in strategic business decisions. And that is honestly the angle I think uh, is the most important. So for example, a printer right now, there's certainly a lot of retail stores and a lot of restaurants that are in big trouble and need help and need customers. And a printer might go in there and say, hey, restaurant person, uh, what you got going on? Or, hey, I can print some menus for you. Or, hey, the kids love QR codes, menu, QR code menus. Let's get a couple in there, you know? And 
the customer might say, oh, I'm so happy you're here. Thank goodness, because, you know, I really needed that. And great. Another person might say, this is the most ridiculous conversation. Why are you even here? I don't know you. Now, think of that conversation another way. Hi, restaurant owner. My name is Deborah, and I want to have a strategic business planning meeting with you and your team to talk to you about what you need to keep your restaurant open to next year, what you need to keep this retail store open till next year. And you go and you sit with them. And by the way, a, a retailer and a restaurateur will know this information. For example, they might say, in order for us to pay our bills and pay our staff and make a profit that we can live, we need 300 people in the dining room every week and we need 600 online orders or some configuration to make that money. From there, instead of a printer just saying, well, we can, we can help you, just tell us how we can help you, which is of no use right now, a printer might be able to say, or a strategic plan, a planning, a strategic planner might be able to say, a strategic communications planner might be able to say, okay, I'm going to go meet with my team and I'm going to come back. And then they come back and they provide a direct mail program, which specifically maybe gets people to a Facebook page where they can communicate daily or a, a mailer that sends out coupons, or loyalty cards in the takeout bags to generate new business, a customer uh, uh, you know, referral, refer a friend, get a, get a pizza, a slice of pizza, something along those lines. But if anybody's expecting normal people on the street to come up with those ideas, you know, that's, it's not going to happen. Um, and so that is really where I believe we are. I, I do understand that that's out of some people's lanes. I'm don't, uh, I'm not really so great at math, so I have an accountant. That's the whole point, you know? You work with the people that are the experts in your field. So find a designer to to freelance or work on staff, to create templates for people so you don't have to say to them, well, just give me the file and I'll print it for you. Instead, you can say, do you need some help creating that? Because we've got you. We can, do you need, are you on social media? We can help you get on there. We, we looked at your Facebook page. Your pictures aren't updated. We're going to send our person over and take some photos and do some Photoshop for you. That is what is, I believe, the next iteration of this for people who will really stay around for, for, the, for the long haul. Again, and again I think separate from the package printers who are going yeah. nowhere. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, what you're saying too is be very much part of the solution as well. You know, you've got to become a solutions provider. <laughs> Well, printers are solutions providers. They now have to provide ideas to provide the solutions for as well. I believe some printers will always have a client base that they don't need to do this. They've lucked out somehow. They're in a, or, or they've diversified enough that there's, they're printing for enough different types of verticals that they're still okay. And that's great. But I just don't see the survival of all of the print shops, if they all are, again, still fighting over that same eight and a half by 11 or if A4, I'm not sure what you use over there, uh, flyer, promotion, uh, advert, whatever, whatever you guys might call them. No, it's, it's so true. Um, Karis, when we were talking about diversification, and it was one thing that came up in that um, Canon industry uh, market survey as well, and that was done with ME printer as well. So it was a very independent survey. But one thing that did come up there was talking about uh, diversity, really away from just printing and packaging. When you look at industry players and when you think of diversification on the scale that needs to happen, where do you see they have to go? Mm -hmm. Karen? Um, well, I think I think one thing that we've seen in the pandemic you know, people had to diversify, people had to move into into new areas. Um, they had to, you know, a lot of them had to make the decision, do we do we kind of shut down? Or do we look at doing something else? You know, if you're, if you're a business that caters to um, events, and, and, you know, exhibitions and, and sports, and that kind of thing, and that's kind of your bread and butter, well, that was gone. So, you know, what do we do now? Um, 
And I think there's been a lot of, um, you know, people pivoted. There's a lot of talk about pivoting and people moved into um, PPE, personal protective equipment. Uh, we saw a lot of that in the print industry, which is which was was great. It was really needed. Um, and lots of businesses looked into other areas and some of those are the most interesting because they these businesses have moved into new areas and now they have you know viable long-term um, additional products and additional services that they offer because these are things that are going to be around for a while so just as an example there's a uh, company in Dublin a print company in Dublin um, that you know, their business seemingly disappeared overnight because what, who they were, you know, just business just dried up. And um, what they did was interesting. They moved out of their kind of business to business comfort zone and into the direct to consumer market with these uh, cardboard products for kids that you, you printed out like really large princess castles and, and rocket ships and um, really easy to produce because they're, they're black and white. You color them in at home, they, you assemble them at home, you know, they're flat packed um products and you know they sent them out they created a separate business a separate website separate ordering system they and they'd never done direct to consumer they created social media channels they started an influencer marketing campaign having never done anything like that and they've ended up with um you know celebrities like the singer John Legend posting about it because they sent him some of the stuff, you know, that's millions of followers and it's picked up by the TV media. Um, and this is like using the wide format equipment they already had um, to print black and white, you know, products and, and send them out. And it was a hugely, hugely successful um, campaign that they ran. And then, you know, normal business started to come back, but they're, you know, they're keeping going with this and they're also bringing it back to business to business because they're, negotiating you know large orders with toy stores and other retailers and, and that sort of thing and now they have you know a, a long-term viable you know new revenue stream and there's a few examples like that that, that I've seen in, in the print industry and it, it just there's also companies that have thought you know we had to quickly move and get these products out and now we've seen that oh we can really quickly you know come up with a new product concept and, and launch it and and we want to do more of that so in the coming years there'll be launching more products when you know they wouldn't have before so uh, you know I think in that regard there's there's a huge amount of innovation going on um in the industry and uh, I think it's 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 going to continue and it's something that the print does really well and that's so exciting I can see Deborah and I were there like doing the wow bit to that I mean that's just and of course it's that Irish ingenuity so I'm kind of <laughs> taking some credit on that one too but uh, so cool to hear something like that going on but again um, and I just want to remind our audience at home, please, by all means, send us some questions. We have still a half hour left, so we'd love to get some questions in. So please do send us some questions. And also, I think perhaps this might be a good time, Deborah, in fact, for both of you to let our audience know a little bit more about what you do. I'm sure they've checked you out online at the minute and listened to some of the great sessions you've got on board, um, a lot of the work that you're doing at Media Center. And also, you know, you're engaging with so many different voices in terms of what's happening in this industry and listening to what's going on and probably with some frustration sometimes, you know, knowing what people need to do, but also you can see where there are some examples where, you know, just like Karis shared there, but some creative examples of great things that work because as you say, they got out of their comfort zone and they might've been forced to do something, but they're finding new ways to do business. Um, Deborah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't characterize it as need to do because what do I know? I'm not a printer. I would just categorize it as what I would do if I were a printer, uh, because I am doing, um, you know, my own uh, reinvention, um, you know, for, for my myself, uh, just uh, with what I'm doing. And I, again, am not trying to end up in a space where I'm competing with people for banner ads. Like, I don't want to be there anymore. I've learned now that that does not work, that I'm very far down the list of people want to put banner ads on my site, you know, compared to trade uh, pubs, but that goes back to who I am and what I do. So uh, thank you for the opportunity for uh, to be able to, uh, you know, share that with people. So um, my name is Deborah Korn and I am the uh, self-appointed intergalactic ambassador to the Printiverse. And I worked in advertising agencies for over 25 years as a print customer, print customer, uh, the director of production. And I um, 
had lost my job. I started a LinkedIn group because I'd run out of people to network with. And I invited people I believed uh, I could, you know, talk with to find a job, whether print customers, printers, uh, designers, uh, human resource people, and, and so on and so forth. And like we we see in life all the time, humans have free will and they do what they want. Um, and they decided to use the group for themselves and not to help me find a job uh, because they didn't know that I, that's why I had brought them there. And um, they started doing things like, does anybody know what this is called? Does anyone have a resource for this? Can somebody tell me why I don't deserve a reprint on this postcard, you know? And it really was became a very interesting experiment. And somewhere along the line at about 5,500 group members, um, a, a very high creative director in one of the advertising agencies wrote me a, a note to thank me and said that the group was like having a, um, a uh, 500 colleagues down the hallway. And I stared at this email for quite some time because working in advertising agencies for over 25 years, like the executive creative director, they knew who I was. I was the person who annoyed them every day to sign something. They didn't have a conversation with me. They didn't send me thank you emails when they were winning uh, advertising awards. I mean, uh, anyone who works in advertising agencies and production knows that the creative directors take credit for all the awards and they just magically appear, you know. Um, but I'm like... This person took time out of their day to find my email address, send me an email and thank me for something. Something must be happening here. I guess I'll become a professional networker instead of looking for a job in advertising. And that LinkedIn group is now the number one print group in the world. There's over 100,000 members in it. And through that, I uh, was able to uh, start working at with Print Media Center, which is a website, and uh, uh, which, to, which actually provides what I call print inspiration and resources for print and marketing professionals. I'm involved with um, community initiatives through that, such as uh, Project Peacock, which was a traveling roadshow to show the new opportunities with print to the advertising agencies and buyers and brands and uh, students and Girls Who Print, which is uh, Girls Who Print Day is coming up, as a matter of fact, on October 22nd, International Print Day. I started a, a holiday for print, which is actually October 21st of this year, a podcast from the Printiverse. I have a podcast channel that has over 100,000 downloads now, is listened to in 130 countries, hoping to have some more uh, listeners from the Middle East and uh, your region after this. And um uh, print chat, which uh, is a chat I've been running since 2011 or 12. And 2014, uh, you were first able to start tracking uh, metrics on social media. And since then, print chat is responsible for over 1.7 billion impressions about print into, uh, you know, the printiverse, as I say. So really, um, this perspective I have and why I called myself the intergalactic ambassador and not the supreme ruler, although I certainly could have called myself the supreme ruler, is because from the vantage point I sit in, I see all the conversations that are going on. I also see where there's disconnects from the manufacturers trying to uh, introduce a new technology like inkjet, for example, and how uh, when they you know start with the messaging cycle they grab some people and they move forward but there's a lot of people behind who aren't in uh, up to speed yet and i find uh, a lot of time what i do is i help those people in the back move forward i'm like wait a second that's not exactly true we just talked about this last month let me show you this video let me show you this thing or let me introduce you to somebody who can actually help you with that so um um, you know, that had turned in, turned into speaking and, and uh, you know, doing, um, working with some of the biggest events in the world and really just helping um, everybody understand all the opportunities that are out there and how they might make a difference uh, to print customers, especially, especially um, and, you know, everybody else uh, to succeed. That was a very long answer. Thank you for indulging me. No, no, but I mean, it's there's so many resources there. And again, for all of our audience, they're going to love to keep an eye on all of those various sort of um, communities, so to speak, that you have put in place because tremendous resources there for everybody. And it's not just about what you do in America. 
I mean, I think while things are not always the same, even if it's down to, you know, the A4 size, that's a little bit longer in America, mm -hmm. whatever you call it, but it, it doesn't matter. It's still ultimately we're all looking at the same um, industry in a way, and we all need to learn from each other. So I think that's the really, really valuable thing nowadays. And of course, it put yes. you on our radar too. So we're really excited. Well, yeah, I mean, everything. I'm I'm global. Um, I'm I'm not just global. I'm extraterrestrial. So uh, that's why I called it Printiverse because it includes everybody. My current vantage point in Corona is only here because I can't go anywhere, but everything else and all the conversations I have are, are global. Uh, yeah. And also I love your Prinspiration. I think this is uh, what the industry needs and it needs a very healthy dose of that to probably wake up a few people now because things will be different and we all need to be ready for it. Karis, again, you have, you know, you have kind of your, you have the heartbeat, so to speak, of the, the industry. You can hear what's going on. You know what's going on. You know, you write a lot about it as well. You know, do you see any new trends that, that are emerging or the trends that just have to emerge? And maybe there's some things we need to forget in this industry and move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, it's it, again, it's it's difficult at the moment with, you know, we, we don't know um, what's going to happen next in, in, in every given place. There's, you know, there was a kind of... Uh, a, a ray of, of light at the end of the tunnel in, in the UK, but now we seem to be going back in a different direction and, and it's it's gonna be a really difficult time for particularly, you know, smaller print print businesses. So, um, you know, it's, it's difficult to look that far ahead. I would say, as I said earlier, and, and I believe Deborah said as well, it's it's an accelerator, um, you know, the pandemic. So, so trends that we've already seen um, are, are, you know, only, becoming more common and more prevalent. Um, I would say definitely one thing that that stands out is that kind of blend of, of the physical and, and the digital and, and that kind of balance there. Um, something that that's great for that is is augmented reality. Um, you know, that's being utilized um, in a lot of really smart ways, you know, due to the, the pandemic. There's print is still um, so important, but we also need um, that that you know that digital layer on top of the, the physical world. So, as you know, as an example, the, when the shops on on Oxford Street in London um, weren't open, they have all these extravagant window displays that you know incorporate you know print and, and signage, and um, there were ways that you could interact with that. You couldn't go into the shop, but you could get your your mobile device out and, and interact with it that way, and. Um, you know, in restaurants and other retail spaces, there's still that need for for um, for blending the physical and the digital because you can't touch things in, in the same way or, or we need different ways of getting information. Um, so I would say certainly that's that's something that that we'll see more of and that, and that will kind of become more um, prevalent. And, and it's something that the young people, the young people of today are, are excited about. I am, um, you know, going to, to Project Peacock at Deborah's event, um, the, the students there, uh, I spoke to a lot of them and, and that that's something that they're excited about, the, the evolution of the industry and how it's moving into, um, into a blend of, of physical and, and digital and, and to look at um, a, a current example of augmented reality in print, there's um, the luxury fashion brand Burberry have just opened a, a store in uh, China and they describe it as a, as a um, I think a, an immersive shopping experience. So it's, and I, I think we're going to see more things like that. And that's going back to, again, retail needs to change. It needs to keep up with uh, the way consumer interests and uh, shopping behaviors are changing. So you know, every every swing tag on the on the clothing has a has a QR code now, so you can um, get more information on the product, on the brand. You can interact with the brand that way. But there's also things like uh, Snapchat integration, where um, the the shop turns into a a kind of animal safari because their latest collection is is Animal Kingdom theme. So it, it reaffirms the brand and it reaffirms you know, current campaigns. Um, and it also integrates WeChat, which is a Chinese social media platform to, for that kind of targeted personalization of whoever's using it as well. And then there's also personal services. You can you know, book appointments, you can make a reservation in, in the cafe that's in the store. So it's, it's 
it really is adding that digital layer to the physical world and, and print is vital to that. So, and, and that's so exciting and futuristic. And, you know, when you think print, you need to be thinking about things like that, you know, Generation Z and young people are, are omni-channel. They want to seamless, they, they want their customer journey to be seamless. Like they can't even really tell that they're moving between the physical and, and digital worlds. And, and, and that's what, what, what we all need to kind of get on board with and realize that's where things are, are moving towards. And it is, it's so true. And when you paint that picture, you can see, you know, how dynamic it's going to be. And Deborah, let's talk about some of those young people where we see them at the moment there, you know, they're like 18, 19, 20. They're spending quite a bit at the moment, but they're going to be the big spenders of the future. So in a way to, I guess, you know, we really need to be embracing their digital natives right now. They're not going to go back and think they're going to be probably going forward. So in a way, the industry has to address you know, what's going on in front of their eyes and actually move with the times. Yeah. um, I mean, some of that is a little bit of a disinformation, though. Millennials are up to 39 years old. These are not children. Um, We need to actually stop thinking of it that way, that they're younger people. There's 76 million of them in the workforce um, making decisions, having $100 million print budgets, and they live on devices. End of story. There's no debate about this anymore. There's no, hey, wouldn't it be fun if we could talk to the kids? Like, no. We, anybody not doing it is actually the one out of this loop. Everybody else is in the loop and you're out of the loop. So you, everybody has to either get on board with all of them or move out, finish what you're doing and move out of the way uh, or, you know, p- uh, partner with other people. But I don't think this is a discussion anymore about wouldn't this be great if we could, you know, communicate on multiple channels like and talk to the kids like now there's there's a different. Now, the difference comes in with something that Karis has actually taught me, which is an authenticity. That is actually the, f- the where is very important not to just be dabbling in things because it's the thing to do, but to be doing it because you believe in that the future is omni-channel and you want to proactively help your customers get there, not just to make a sale. Um, there will, as I said, there will always be someone coming, hey, there's this thing called augmented reality and the kids love it. And then there's other people who are like, we can come in here and strategically help you use digital technologies to drive traffic wherever you need traffic to go and to help you communicate whether it's on the side of a carton or a side of a bus or a phone or a mess a text or um a, a message in the sky you know it 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 doesn't matter so um i just think we have to stop thinking about it like you know, what the younger generations uh, are into. It's, we need to stop trying to fit everybody back. Well, we don't do that. So wouldn't you like a, just a postcard instead? No, <laughs> we, that conversation actually has to stop. Yeah, it's really, it's it's, it's a time of new thinking. Um, Karis, just when, when we think about automation, and when we actually think of the, the initial sort of printing press, we go back to the Johannes Gutenberg days of the 1400s. Um, and, you know, I think one of the lovely things that is still exists is the concept of a, a Gutenberg moment. And I still hear this phrase out there. It sort of feels like the press, the, uh, the printing industry needs its own new Gutenberg moment to actually shift monumentally to the next level. What do you think? Um, I think, I mean, Print has incredible um, innovative moments, you know, all the time and, and it's innovating all the time and, and moving forward and, and um, you know, the, the, the product cycles, are, are, you know, are quicker. People are doing incredible things. I think, I think maybe if rather than a, a Gutenberg moment, print might need to just get better at, at showing how many incredible moments it has and, and what it offers and, and show the outside world. Um, what it's capable of. I mean, print's a really vast industry and it's it's hard to define, um, but it touches everything. It's, you know, it's it's a huge part of, of our daily lives. And there's still so many people that think it's, you know, uh, books and magazines and, and uh, you know, 
associate it with things that are maybe declining, but that that's not true. I mean, just what we've been talking about then, that the evolution of it and how it's moving forward and how it's a part of everything. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm perhaps there'd be someone else better placed to talk about a, a Gutenberg moment in print. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not at the forefront of the of the engineering innovation that's going on in the industry. But, um, you know, I do think, you know, particularly if you look at, at digital print, you know, the things you can do. People aren't aware of all the incredible things you can do. You know, you can you can print on anything. You can do so many things. And 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 saying again about about. Um, Project Peacock that we were talking about, people would come and look at the samples and, and can't believe that these things are possible. And, you know, that's what print needs to be doing rather than looking for the next big moment. It's, you know, celebrate the big moments that we're already having and all the incredible things that are going on and that can be done. Um, and, and that's what I would say would, would be the next big thing to, to focus on there. Now, I, I know both of you talk about retail and e-tail and v-tail, and I love, I've loved listening to that conversation. So, Deborah, come in on this one. Again, and it's about talking to the customers in different ways, but bring us up to date for other people who mightn't have heard you uh, talk about retail and e-tail and, and retail. Um, well, e-commerce, we all know, is buying things through website, but um, the thing that is coming, which is uh, in in certainly in development is here in 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 ways just consumers aren't really using it that much at the moment, is um, voice technologies, voice first technologies. And unfortunately I didn't turn off my voice devices. So when I, you didn't either. Okay. So everybody who has an A L E X A anywhere near them, my apologies, um, in advance, uh, for this conversation that we're about to have or a Google. Yep. There it goes. Um, <laughs> or Siri. Uh, so for example, um, we are currently asking, Alexa, mm, there she goes. Uh, what time is it? What's the weather? You know, is there, you know, what what should I watch on TV? <laughs> Thank you, Alexa. <laughs> You'll never be lonely again. I'm either. just going to unplug her. Give me one second. <laughs> it always means we've got companions. Yeah. Sorry. We <laughs> d actually did a, I actually did a session with the um, man named Bradley Matt Ro Met Rock and he run, he's the foremost expert in the United States. And um, during this session, everybody's Alexis in the entire uh, webinar were going off. It was very funny, but um, so voice prompts, voice commands, searching now becomes searching with voice. So, but not just Alexa, find me a print shop. That's remedial. Alexa, find me a print shop who can print, print me 500 postcards at this, <laughs> she's going off my other room, uh, who can find me a print shop who can print me a post, 5,000 postcards at this price and ship them somewhere. And with the proper feeding, of digital information to places like Yelp and Google and Bing and uh, all the uh, the search engines and data where these devices pull from, they will, she, it will produce a result. And if you cannot be found by me asking about you, We've got a big problem now. And um, I don't mean this to be the gloom and doom section of the conversation, but perhaps there's a moment for it. I'm gonna look into the camera at the printers out there who don't address their websites. Hi, this is your moment to update your website so that it can be found on the search engines, as well as optimizing uh, e-commerce and, and everything else, getting yourself listed so you can get reviews, um, getting reviews, making this an, a, a mission of your company. Every time there's a happy customer, get them to give you five stars, four stars, whatever it might be. Make sure your website is responsive, meaning that no matter what device I'm looking at, I can do everything you want me to function on your platform 
possibly shy of sending you a file, which I agree at the moment is not really conducive over a phone or over, you can, you can do it from those fancy schmancy iPads, but let's just say that's the last thing I need to do on a desktop computer. Everything after that, is not going to be focusing on the search engines anymore. It's going to be focusing on the devices. And this is not just some little thing that, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a trend. It's a, I, we are already seeing commercials in the United States where cars are fully interfaced with Alexa. And I can, be coming up to my house and ask for the lights to come on. And uh, we, uh, Karis and I were actually at a voice first conference. And um, I mean, you can, you can, there's games, you can learn things in the car. <laughs> and Karis kept asking me to ask the president of Nigeria and it knew, it knows everything. Um, so this is a big deal. Um, and uh, you know, let's say you heard it here first, but um, Voice first technology. I would I would implore everybody to start researching that and start planting the seeds now. It's not you're not gonna you can't currently ask as specifically to find a print shop, but this is where we're going, and you cannot catch up to that. You need to be there. It's like trying to catch up on SEO, when, uh, which is search engine optimization. If you do a search and you're like, why doesn't my print shop come up on this search? It's because you're not doing things that you need to do for Mr. Google, as I refer to him, to pay attention to your site. So this is very, very important. But there's way more implications. And Karis writes about this a lot, about healthcare and and um, security. And it's really an impressive world and to be part of it, to be able to, the first printer that's able to say to their customers, hey, you don't need to call us, just ask Alexa to, 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 uh, to call us, which she can do, by the way, she, it can do that. It can, the device can, can uh, make phone calls. So Karis, I, I, I t again, I'm sorry, I'm long-winded. Karis, uh, please, I'm going to, I'm going to tag team you on this one because you see such different things in it than I do. I see it as it's, it's, it's SEO for, for it's voice search. Yeah. But there's and, so and many things there, as you said too, and I do exactly want Karis to come in on that, but fascinating because when you think about it, if we just think of what does a printer website look like, and you're probably right putting that warning out there, it's not the dynamic um, sort of forward-looking thing usually that we might expect. It does tend to be maybe a little bit dated. So I bet there's a few of them that uh, will maybe have a rethink on that, but please. You're Karen. much kinder than me <laughs> in your description of printers' websites. Just saying, Karen. I've seen thousands of them. Yeah, yeah and I, I, I really do, you know, echo everything Deborah said. I mean, we went to the, the, this, um, the voice conference in, in, January of this year, if you can believe that, but um, I, and it was, it was a hugely eye-opening experience um, of of what's coming, how we're going to interact um, with with search, and you know, using more natural language, you know, that's a, a, a how things are going to adapt, and and it's something that print businesses need to be thinking about, and I also, you know, I I see it from an SEO perspective as well. SEO is still you know, one of the most important things to take on board from a, from a marketing perspective. And that is going to change. People are going to be using voice search a huge amount more. I can't remember the figures, but there were some insane figures about how many voice searches there were going to be in, in 2020. And I'm sure with the pandemic that's been affected and people have been, you know, using voice technology more. I mean, a technology where you can search, but you don't have to touch anything can only be something that people are really keen on in a in a pandemic. Um, when you're trying to, you know, reduce touch and and, and, and stop spread of the virus. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's a hugely important area. And um, I, I think it's something that, that, that print businesses really need to sit up and, and take notice of, because as Deborah said, it's, it's coming and it's going to become more uh, important. But, but websites, you know, the SEO of your, of your normal kind of e-commerce e side of things, um, you know, go where your customers are. You know, this, Deborah's absolutely right. Take this time 
um, you know, if, if your customers can't find you, you know, they'll find somebody else, they'll find your competitors. So why um, put all the effort into, you know, creating your great business and, and working hard, you know, and creating great print projects for your clients only to be, um, you know, invisible in, in the world of, of search. And, um, you know, everybody is, if, if you look at the figures of, of the rise in, in online searches and the rise of online shopping, why would you not put yourself, you know, where you need to be and, and kind of in your customers' faces? But it just doesn't make sense anyway, but particularly in, in the current climate and, and the direction we're going in. Um, let me just stay with you for a minute, Karis. We are coming to the, the close of this and I've only got a few minutes left. But from you, if you were to send a message out there to our audience, so that's giving you time to think about it, Deborah, because I'm coming to you for the grand finale and yeah. your role as intergalactic ambassador. So I'll <laughs> leave it with you in the printer sphere at the moment. But Karis, to, to really send that message, I suppose uh, the wake up, and I think we've delivered quite a bit here. Both of you have done a great job of doing that. But to send that message in terms of to the printing industry, what do they need to sort of to thrive and survive? Because we're looking at this for the long term and I'm sure they all want to be in business years from now. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, you know, put purpose first is a message that, that I would give, you know, and that's something I talk about with the with the industry 5.0 topic. It's why are we doing this? Why is this the way things are? Why is this our processes? You know, ask those questions. You need to think um, about purpose above everything else. What do your customers want? You know, really take this moment to take stock and think about why you're doing things. Take a step back and think about why, you know, your print shop or, or your print business, whatever you do, is the way it is where are you going? You know, it's, it's a really good time to, to ask those big questions and think about your purpose and, and the why of your business. And probably something the industry mightn't do on a, on a regular day-to-day -day basis. So a good time to do it. Deborah, I'm leaving you the closing word here. Inspire us. Oh, no pressure. Um, I would say that if somebody were to ask a print shop or printer what they do. If the first thing a printer thinks is, well, I print things, you're probably in a lot of trouble. <laughs> um, the, the goal here in, in my mind is um, something I was, I actually presented to over a thousand printers on, in the, uh, which was uh, reinvention in recovery and how um, that from every, everything right now is up for grabs as far as a new path that you can forge uh, for yourself. Um, Relooking at your staff, looking at some of those legacy relationships that maybe now's the time to let them go so you can form new relationships. Um, understanding most importantly, the mindset of the customers, no matter who they might be, whether they're a store in a crisis or a brand in a crisis, everybody's in a crisis right now, um, except again, pharmaceutical companies, you know, food companies. I'm talking, I'm not talking about the things that are never uh, going to, uh, you know, um, but even in those, there's a supply chain issue. So, you know, everything is not pandemic proof. Um, if somebody asked you, uh, my goal and the inspiration I, I will leave everybody is to uh, think big, think bold, and boldly go where no printer has gone before. And uh, that fits into my print long and prosper um, mentality uh, in, in the sense that everything, anything anybody needs, it's part of the communications food chain you should be able, you need to be able to say yes to. Even if you don't do it, you say yes and you find a resource. So um, from a coaster to a, um, a direct mail piece to an annual report to, it does not matter, you can get it all done. PPE, um, safety graphics, uh, you know, be an active part of your communities, really help your communities stay open. It's so important and, and diversify as much as possible. Um, there is print business out there. This is my inspiration to you. You just have to not 
find it, but make it in a new way. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I love that print long and prosper. That'll be the mantra out there for the industry. Um, I want to thank you both so much. I mean, that has been just so enlightening. It really has been so engaging and informative. Thank you so much um, to Deborah and to Karis. And I know our audience will have a great time to look into what you're doing and hopefully connect with you. So again, thank you for taking the time to be with us. It's been really special here on this Frontiers of Innovation. An initiative, as I said to you, always brought to you by Canon. We'll bring you monthly updates where we're talking to some of the key players in a variety of industry. But today we heard there from what's new and what we can expect in the printing industry. A different look, a very dynamic look, and a very, very exciting look for the prospects and the opportunities that are there. So from all of us at Canon, we'll leave it with you for now. And I think, again, print long and prosper when it comes to the printing sector and keep an eye out for more frontiers of innovation. Thank you so much for joining us.